Long time no see, but we are back. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully we're back. But I just wanted to pop on and say hi, and we did not fall off the face of the earth. We just got really, really busy towards the end of last summer, had some things go on, and YouTube was the easiest thing to let go. So it was let go, but now I've got a little bit more margin in my day-to-day -day life again. And I wanted to pick back up and hopefully start sharing again. Thank you to everybody that's like hung in and waited around and the new subscribers that showed up even while I wasn't sharing videos. But I'm really excited to get back and let y'all know what our plans are for this year for the garden, different things that we've done. I've picked up a couple new skills since we visited last and hopefully I can share those with y'all. But I just wanted to come back and say, hi, we're back. And I hope everybody had a great Christmas, a great New Year, great holidays, and all that. So last year, our garden was small. Well, it wasn't super small, but it wasn't quite to the scale that we wanted because I wanted to give myself a lot of grace. It was our first garden, our first year here, and I really just wanted to get my feet wet and see what worked, what didn't work. And I'll post a link to the video from last year about when we tilled up the garden spot and all that. So this year we wanted to change locations for the garden because like I said, the first, the top half of the garden was really nice, sandy loam, loved it. Bottom half was black gumbo. That was really hard to get dry. Like it stayed wet for so long because of the amount of rain we get, it was really hard to get the ground tilled up and ready to plant. So we've had another really wet winter and we took advantage of all the rain. Actually, it was just on Saturday we got out and we said, okay, let's pick a new spot for the garden because our yard still has a lot of water in it. And we walked around most of the yard and checked places that we thought might be good for a garden. And we found a place right over here next to the wood. It, it's a nice little <laughs> a nice little jog from the house but we feel like this is going to be a really good spot even with all of the the water the rain everything that we've had this place is high and it's dry and it's sand that good sandy loam so we're going to put the bulk of our garden here and I don't think we're going to have trouble hauling water over to water it and all that I'm not too I'm not too worried about that but I'm really excited. I'll probably put, um, I'm not sure what all I'm gonna put here. I may have a couple rows of tomatoes up close to the house since I feel like I have to baby tomatoes more than anything. So I may put a few rows in behind the house where we had our garden last year for tomatoes and peppers, but we'll be putting probably squash and cucumbers and green beans. And I don't, I don't know what all else here in this spot. And then we picked another spot over on the other side, over close to our pond, that we're gonna have several really long rows for corn, peas, and okra. And I'll probably, probably potatoes will be here. And maybe this year I'll actually get to do my plan of planting potatoes and then turning right back around and putting sweet potatoes. That may not happen, who knows, we'll, we'll see what happens, but that's the, that's the plan so far. Our plan for our long rows, like for corn, peas, okra, whatever, we're gonna put several long rows that follow the curve of the, of the pond. And yeah, we've got a gun range, but that's not gonna affect the garden. We won't be gardening and shooting at the same time, but probably about 10, 10 feet wide. That way we can have at least three rows of corn and it'll just follow around there. And hopefully, hopefully that'll work out well. This spot isn't quite as dry as the spot over on the other side, but it is good sand. So we're very hopeful that this is gonna work out really well for us. It is drier than other parts of the yard, but it isn't completely dry. But we, <laughs> we have water. We have water standing everywhere. I'm trying to get it where you can see. But that's that's just this time of year in this part of the country. 
but that's what we've got planned so far we still have to get get the tiller over here and get everything tilled up but i'm really excited to see what we do this year so what are you doing building a bird nest for science oh cool what all have you used uh, sticks, pine straw, and leaves. Cool. So you had to do this for science today in your science book? Mm -hmm. What's your favorite thing you learned today? Uh, probably about the eagle. What about the eagles? It's just the nest gets very heavy to falls on a tree. Wow. Crazy ones on my head. Wow. So, like I mentioned in the last couple months that we've been on our little YouTube break, I picked up a couple new skills. One of them I had already learned several years ago, but I picked up my knitting, my knitting needles again for the first time in probably, oh, 15 years at least. And took up knitting again. I was inspired by a friend of mine on Instagram and I ended up making my first pair of socks and I'm hooked. I'm working on a second pair now and I had forgotten how much fun knitting was. So I've added that back. I try to do something with my hands, some little bit of hand work for about 15 minutes a day, whether it's knitting or I'm also learning how to spin. I have a drop spindle and I've been learning how to spin and that's been so much fun. Spinning may be my new most favorite hobby I have ever picked up. It's great, I love it, and I'm really excited to see where, where I end up in it and what I'm able to do, what I'm able to make with the yarn that I spin. I'm loving learning how to spin. I'm really excited to see what I'm able to make with the yarn that I've been spinning. I'm hoping I'll have enough maybe for another pair of socks. What I'm working with right now, I've got a Turkish drop spindle and the fiber that I'm working with is a wool and silk blend. And you can't really tell much about the colors here, but you can see it's got pinks and grays and greens and blues. This colorway is called River Rock and I bought it from Crafted by Locals. You can look her up on Instagram or on Facebook or she has a website, I believe it's craftedbylocals.com. I'll link it in the description below. But this is some roving that she dyed and it is incredible. It's gorgeous and I can't wait to see what it looks like once I'm finished and I have it plied and then knitted or crocheted up into a project. But I'm really, really enjoying learning this new skill and I can't wait to see what I do with it. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Thank you for stopping by. If you aren't already a subscriber, I would be tickled pink if you would subscribe. That way you can stay caught up whenever I post videos or anything like that. You can also follow me on Instagram. I try to post there two or three times a week things that won't fit into a video or just little everyday life updates. Thanks so much for stopping by and I'll see you again in the next video.